after the Cuban Revolution, Fidel Castro imposed a policy of military internationalism and Cuban intervention to expand communism throughout the world. By the mid-1980s, a quarter of Cuba's total military strength was committed to its internationalist missions, fighting with socialist governments or factions in various civil conflicts. Military internationalism, however, would end with the disillusionment of the Soviet Union in 1991, which curtailed much-needed Soviet logistical and financial support that was needed to sustain Cuba's foreign expeditions. With all of that in mind, let's dive into Cuba's Cold War interventions by region, starting with the Caribbean and Central America. In 1959, Cuba's first planned coups were in Panama and the Dominican Republic, and they were massive failures. The Cubans were quickly arrested in Panama, but in the Dominican Republic, 15 soldiers of the Republic easily killed the Cubans who were disembarking on the beaches. And the next week, Dominican jets rocketed the second wave of invaders. In total, 217 Cubans were killed and 7 were captured in the Dominican Republic, absolutely destroying Castro's plans. From 1979 to 1990, during the Sandinista Revolution in Nicaragua, Cuba sent military personnel who took control of the Nicaraguan military, security, and intelligence services. They also supported the Sandinistas against the Contras. However, some Cuban personnel were accused of abuses, including an incident where Cuban advisors killed civilians after one spilled beer on a soldier's uniform. Another Caribbean location where the Cubans sent troops into was Grenada after the 1979 revolution, which declared a Marxist-Leninist state and suspended elections and other political parties. Cuba sent mostly construction workers described as citizen soldiers and few military forces to advise the new regime. During the 1983 U.S. invasion of Grenada and Operation Urgent Fury to restore democracy to the country, Cuba deployed limited military forces that were easily defeated by the U.S. Moving to South America in 1961, Venezuela cut ties with Cuba as part of the Bentancourt Doctrine where Venezuela severed relations with non-democratic countries. In 1964, Cuba attempted some kind of coup in the country and was sanctioned by the Organization of American States. Therefore, Cuba did the only logical thing, which was to try to attempt another coup at overthrowing the government with the 1967 Manchukuto Rage where the Cubans wanted to go through Venezuela to the Andes to train revolutionaries. But of course, they were caught and arrested. In Bolivia, Cuba supported Che Guevara to try and overthrow the existing Bolivian government from 1966 to 1967. This intervention would also fail and resulted in the execution of Che Guevara by the Bolivians. Cuba was also the main supporter of the communist insurgency in Chile from 1973 to 1990. Cuba provided aid to the Marxist rebel group MIR and the terrorist group FPMR with weapons and financial support as well as shelter, inside training in Cuba, and logistical support. Cuba would also create an operations room to politically unite the MIR and FPMR under Cuban command. In the Middle East, during the Yemenite War of 1972, Cuban pilots flew both combat and training missions for South Yemen against the North. In 1973, during the Yom Kippur War, Cuba sent 4,000 troops to Syria as well as tanks and helicopters to attack Israel in the occupied Golan Heights. In North Africa, Cuba supported Algeria in the sand war between Morocco and Algeria in 1963 where Cuba sent tanks, aircraft, weapons, and troops. Castro sought to keep the intervention covert in order to avoid international backlash with many Cuban troops participating in the conflict wearing Algerian uniforms. However, French forces quickly discovered Cuban intervention and reported it to other governments. Apparently, the Cubans did not actively participate in combat, and they were eventually withdrawn by the end of the year after providing training to Algerians and using military hardware for them. Turning to the rest of Africa, Cuba heavily participated in the Congo crisis, particularly in the Simba Rebellion aspect from 1963 to 1965. Cuba sought to make the Congo become the next Cuba in Africa and put many resources into trying to get the Simbas to defeat the DRC. However, the Simbas appeared powerful on paper, but in reality, they were an undisciplined fighting force that spread terror throughout the regions that they held as they massacred many innocent civilians. Operation South was conducted by the Congolese in 1965 and would prove to be the last major blow to the Cuban and Simba operations in the Congo. The Guinea-Bissau War of Independence is known as the Portuguese-Vietnam and lasted from 1963 to 1974. You see, Portugal strongly believed in maintaining its colonial empire and would fight long and hard wars against the colonized countries over independence. And Cuba saw this as an opportunity as free real estate regarding expanding communism and Cuban authority. Regarding the Guinea-Bissau War of Independence, the Cuban military mission itself was small with mostly artillerymen being deployed. Cuban advisors also came to the country where they were well-suited to wage a guerrilla war.
Mozambique's War of Independence from 1964 to 1974 saw major difficulties for Cuban intervention, not by the U.S., Portuguese, or any other state, as pretty much the entire world except for Portugal supported the rebels and independence, but the difficulties for Cuba came from the rebels themselves and the Cubans who were wanting to train them. The Cubans had identified Mozambique's War for Liberation as one of the most important ones occurring in Africa at the time, partially due to Cold War politics. But Cuba's efforts to make connections with the FREMLIMO were frustrated almost from the outset. You see, the rebels consistently rejected planned locations to train their forces by the Cubans, but eventually the, they resolved these conflicts, but the rebels had greatly exaggerated their own strength to the Cubans and they were very upset about this. But, you know, Cuba still saw them as free real estate. In the Angolan War of Independence from 1961 to 1974, like the Mozambique War of Independence, saw pretty much the entire world supporting rebels against the Portuguese in this war of liberation. The key difference, however, was that NATO and Warsaw Pact states backed different rebel groups in the War of Independence, and therefore there would have no consequences of that after the War of Independence was over, right? So the Angolan Civil War breaks out right after the War of Independence and lasts until 2002, with Cuba becoming knee-deep involved, launching Operation Carlotta with a full-scale Cuban intervention that reached a peak of 36,000 Cuban ground troops in Angola. In the end, Cuban and Angolan military officials met U.S. and South African officials in Cape Verde on July 22, 1988, and agreed to an immediate ceasefire among their forces for all South African troops to withdraw by September 1st. Meanwhile, Cuban troops would remain until 1991. Both the Soviets and Cubans supported Somalia and Ethiopia in the late 1970s as both were communist states. However, when both went to war with one another in the Ogaden War in 1978, they sided with Ethiopia because it was led by a man named Mengistu, who was a genocidal maniac. Anyway, the Cubans deployed 12 to 18,000 combat troops in country, and Castro bullied the Soviets into also sending ground troops to defeat the Somalis, and displaced about half a million Somalis living in Ethiopia. Cuba would also support Mengistu's Ethiopia in the Ethiopian Civil War, where almost 2 million people would be killed. 500 Cuban advisors were also sent to Rhodesia to advise rebels and small terrorist groups on how to do guerrilla warfare. Now this is just a mere overview of Cuba's Cold War interventions, but are there any of these that you would like for me to dive into further in a separate video? Are there any interventions which I left out? Write in the comments below, and thank you for watching.